Hello and welcome to People's Voice, where true stories touch deep emotions. Today, we delve into Daughter's Drunk Confession Turn My World Upside Down and Current Circumstances Make It Even Worse. Come, let's explore these real life stories. My wife and I have been together for 25 years, but married for 19. We are high school sweethearts and have two amazing kids, a daughter and a son. I was honestly under the impression that we had a solid marriage, that our relationship wouldn't be like our friends and colleagues, and we'd actually stand the test of time. Now, I see how spectacularly naive and wrong I was. My wife has been a stay-at-home mom for most of our adult lives, something we both agreed upon. But after our kids went to college, she began feeling restless, empty nest syndrome, I guess. She would tell me she was feeling unfulfilled and felt like she had lost a sense of who she was. I tried recommending hobbies we could do together, places we could visit, or even adopting puppies if that would help. At first, she was all for it, but soon began saying she wanted to feel like she was contributing and not simply coasting through life. I understood and was willing to support her. She never liked sitting still, so I kind of expected it. She complained to a few friends, and one of them actually managed to get her an interview at a real estate firm she used to work in one before having the kids. I was just as excited as she was when she accepted. In the beginning, things were going great, but after the first year, I noticed some changes. She started going to gatherings with co-workers, began texting a lot more than usual when at home and at odd hours at night. She even started wearing a particular type of perfume and more suggestive clothing, nothing too revealing or provocative, but clothing that complemented her body figure a lot more than usual. What made me suspicious was when I accidentally saw a message from a male coworker on her phone, I wasn't snooping, which seemed highly inappropriate and flirtatious. I asked about it, and I could tell she was slightly shaken, but assured me he was simply a friend and she would talk to him about his inappropriate messages. Not wanting to be the paranoid, jealous, and controlling husband, I chose to believe her and let it go, oh, how I wish I didn't. Her behavior grew more strange as time went on. She started mentioning how she wanted to be more spontaneous with life and even picked up smoking weed. I made jokes about how she seemed to be living the same college lifestyle as our kids and suggested she slow down. But she dropped an absolute bomb when she mentioned in a drunken state after another night out that maybe I dampened her lights and held her back. I was completely blindsided by this and really believed I was messing up somehow, so I tried to do everything to improve the marriage. I even booked counseling, but it went nowhere. Then, out of the blue, that strange behavior stopped. My wife apologized for the way she had acted. She said it was like she forgot who she was but realized what she had at home and knew she didn't want to lose it. She resigned from her job, and we began marriage counseling. It was tough initially, but things improved immensely, and for the two years, our marriage was better than ever. She was more attentive, initiated intimacy more, and showered me with affection. The only problem was that her relationship with our daughter seemed to be in a nosedive. I questioned my wife about it, but she told me it was a growing phase or a woman thing, and once again, I took her word for it. Funny thing is, during this period, my relationship with my daughter improved. She would call a lot more, meet me for coffee or lunch often during the week, and even bought me gifts, t-shirts, and other things. I always told her it wasn't necessary, but she insisted, and I could always tell she wanted to say something but would hold her tongue. Tragedy struck one evening when my wife was returning from doing groceries and was hit by a drunk driver. She unfortunately lost the use of her legs and has been wheelchair-bound ever since. Things got really bad, and she would make suggestions about me sleeping with other women, to which I obviously refused. I just chalked it up to her depression and reminded her that I was here to stay because I loved her more than our situation. This actually made her cry and asked me why I was so good to her or what she did to deserve me. Again, I chalked it up to depression and just tried to help her as best I could. Sometime later, we went for our medical checkups. The doctor sat us down to inform us that they had found a mass in my wife's throat. It was of an unusual size, and because it might be cancerous, they needed to do a biopsy. My first reaction was shock, whereas my wife was initially blank and then started laughing. It started small and became hysterical as she began mumbling that this was her punishment. We managed to calm her down, but she requested that before the biopsy, we have a family dinner. 
I, of course, agreed, and we had our kids and immediate family over. I made a speech about how my wife was the light of my life and how we get through this, but at the end of my speech, I noticed my daughter was rather uncomfortable. I thought that maybe it was because of what was going on that made her feel that way. The next evening, my daughter phoned me drunk, begging me not to hate her. At first, I was confused, but reassured her that I would never hate her because she is my little girl, and I will always love her. At those words, she went on to tell me how she caught her mother cheating on me with a man she had never seen before. It was during my wife's time at the real estate firm. My daughter had gone on a road trip with some friends and decided to stop by a diner they don't normally frequent to get a bite. That's where she saw her mother lip-locked with a man who looked nothing like me. Apparently, this was why their relationship deteriorated and ours improved. I confronted my wife, and to her credit, she didn't deny it. Through tears, she confirmed it was the co-worker from the messages and said it was the dumbest thing she had ever done. She said he was always coming on to her and eventually wore down her walls. She told me that getting caught by our daughter made her realize the gravity of what she was doing. She wanted to take it to the grave because she never wanted to hurt me and was too much of a coward to confess, so she begged our child not to tell me. I am absolutely shattered by the revelation and don't know what to do. I now question every aspect of our relationship and wonder where I went wrong. She tells me I was a good husband and that none of this is on me. The problem is, since that time, I haven't been loving towards her. I still take care of her, but it's more like a nurse does with a patient rather than a husband to his wife. If I leave her, she will be completely stranded. She is dependent on me both financially and emotionally, and it seems immensely unfair. Sorry if it seems all over the place, but I am a mess right now. Update. I did something I am not proud of. My wife has always been on my case to express my true feelings and thoughts about her, no matter how ugly or cruel they might be. Not long after, during the afternoon while I was preparing lunch for her as I always do, just as I was about to leave her to her meal, she suddenly grabbed my hand and once again begged me to say something to her anything, because it was killing her the way I've been treating her since our D-Day. At those words, I just exploded. A lot came out of me. I told her that to me, she was once perfection, but since this happened, she has become used in my eyes. I told her that the very sound of her voice used to make me want to give her the world, but now simply being around her makes me want to run and never look back. I said that now she feels like a dead weight around my neck that will never leave because it needs me to survive. I explained that through all this, she is still somehow the first thing I think about when I wake up in the morning and the last thing I think about when I go to sleep, but those thoughts are accompanied by a pain I never knew existed, making me absolutely miserable because I still need her. I still want to hold her in my arms, but each time I touch her, I have mental images of her with another man. What eats at me the most is the fact that she dragged our daughter into this. She put our baby girl in an impossible position and expected life to go on like nothing happened. I pointed out that even despite her current circumstances, her relationship with our daughter has hardly changed, and that is the result of her actions. My wife just sobbed softly through it all, and at the end, she simply said she deserved all that was coming her way. She said she tried her hardest to atone for the regrettable decisions she made during that time and has never stopped seeking forgiveness from our daughter. She explained that seeing me in this state makes her feel like a murderer and she will do absolutely anything to help me heal and recover from this. She also added that she wanted me to know that even if I never forgive her and end up divorcing her, she has and always will love only me. She doesn't regret our life in marriage because it is more than she could have ever asked for. Apparently, she can hardly look at herself in the mirror because of who is looking back at her and she never wanted to be that person. I can see she clearly hates herself for what she did, but I am torn about all this. I never knew it was possible to both love and hate someone at the same time. I have decided to book therapy for both me and my wife because I have a lot I want to say to her, but I am afraid I'll go too far, so speaking in a controlled environment will be best. I also have this overwhelming urge to speak with the man she was involved with. It may be useless after many years, but I feel like I need to do it for my own sanity. I want to know who the man was who had the audacity to come between a husband and his wife. I believe I will ask for his information during the therapy session. 
If you love this story and crave more tales of love, betrayal, and healing, don't forget to subscribe for more from Cheating Stories.